guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a very exciting review on the little Huda Obsessions palette series. So if you guys are interested in hearing my thoughts on these little guys, just keep watching. Also, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. I usually upload every other day, so you do get quite a bit of content from me, and I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. My goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2017, so if you could go ahead and do that for me, it would really, really make my day. Also, as a thank you, I do have a small little giveaway going on, guys. I'm giving away one of the ColourPop X My Little Pony palettes, so I will go ahead and leave all that information down in the description box, so check there for that. Also, really quick, I do want to mention, in this video, I have on the Becca Matte Foundation. This is a Huda lipstick. I mix two shades. I'm wearing the palettes on my eyes and then on my face. I'm wearing the Makeup Forever Lustrous Blush Palette. I'm going to have a separate video reviewing that product as well on my channel, so make sure to check that out as well. Without further blabbering, let's get into this review video. Hey guys, fun fact about me is that I live in Fargo, North Dakota. It's definitely like the coldest place on earth that I've ever been to. I will say New York is pretty chilly because most New Yorkers walk everywhere, which makes it really cold. But Chicago, I really don't think you deserve the title of Windy City because if you've ever been to Fargo, North Dakota, trust me, sometimes I feel like I can't even keep my car on the road because it is that windy. <laughs> so hopefully that explains my hat. I was actually going to leave my house, but my plans fell through. So I'm going to go ahead and film the rest of my review video that I was working on. Yeah, let's talk about these Huda palettes. So I've honestly been like obsessed with Huda. Right now the VIB sale round two is happening and honestly a majority of the things I've picked up have been Huda products. I picked up most of her mini lip kits. I bought one of her highlighting palettes which I'm really excited to play with. And then I of course picked up these Obsession palettes. These launched the day before the round one for Rude started and I was like so anxious and I was like I gotta buy them I gotta buy them and I was like Karen just wait nothing has sold out like do not panic so I managed to suck it up and wait until the sale started so I did get these for 20% off and these are called the obsession eyeshadow palette so she has four of them and I believe they are still all in stock on the Sephora website and I think they're also available if you do live overseas on cult beauty I believe is the website Website and they're based out of the UK and of course Sephora.com so if you're interested in shopping these I will go ahead and link them down below if you guys want to get to the Sephora website using that link I it's like a affiliate link but honestly like I maybe have like 90 cents in that account so if you <laughs> don't feel comfortable doing that don't worry about it it's just another way to for me to try and make some money on YouTube but no big deal so these retail for $27 a piece, and I would honestly put these in the high-end category. I know a lot of people are like, oh, 27 bucks, that doesn't seem like a whole lot for an eyeshadow palette, but honestly, these are pretty small. So just for comparison purposes, this is the Dose of Colors Mirror May Highlighter, and as you can see, it's not much bigger than this highlighting palette. I did realize I don't have a lot of small duos, quads, trios, from any other brand. This is like the first brand that I picked up a small eyeshadow palette from, which is interesting because I know a lot of like high-end brands like Tom Ford, Charlotte Tilbury, all of their eyeshadow palettes are pretty compact, but I think this is kind of like the first time a mid-range brand came out with something smaller. I really can't think of anything else that I have that is in like this really tiny sizing. So definitely a new venture for me. If I didn't already mention, there's four palettes and they come with nine shades. Now this is the only palette of mine that arrived broken. My black was completely shattered and I've been watching quite a few haul videos from the VIB sale and it seems like a lot of people, at least one of their palettes are coming broken, which I think speaks a little bit to the quality of these eyeshadows. Now I have been playing with them all week long and personally for me I do feel like they aren't the same quality as the Desert Dusk palette. Now this one I really really enjoy. I gave it a very positive review. If you guys are interested in seeing the review for this palette I will link it up in the cards for you guys. This is honestly one of my favorite palettes of 2017 but these ones guys I swear there is a difference in the quality 
quality. These kind of remind me of how everyone loves like the ABH eyeshadow palettes, but then Subculture came out and it's like all of a sudden people that were okay at makeup, like me, like I wouldn't consider myself an expert, but I feel like I can blend an eyeshadow to save my life. And sometimes I have the hardest time blending these eyeshadows and I couldn't tell you why. Like I don't know if it's me. I don't feel like it is because I do the same thing every time when I prep my eyes. I always use a paint pot by MAC and then I set my paint pot with Dermablend's translucent powder and that's how I always start every eye makeup look and I've not had a problem with it but I swear sometimes with these shadows they kind of start blending but then they're really patchy um, so I really have a tough time this is one that I definitely had a hard time with some of these darker shades and then last night I wore this silver shade and I don't know if you guys will be able to see it but I feel like I'm almost gonna hit pan on the silver shade and that's not something that happened to me with the subculture palette but it's definitely like already got a dip in it and when I was trying to pick it up with a wet brush I could see the shadow like moving around so I really don't think these are worth $27. I'm a little bit surprised. I have more stuff to tell you guys about, but first we'll jump into the demo of this look. Now, I kind of mentioned in the demo too, I really don't have anywhere to be today, so I didn't want to do like a crazy eye look, but I tried to, you know, do something basic every day. It's an all matte look, so go ahead and check out that demo video, and then I'll be back with more. Okay, so my lids are already primed. I do have foundation on. I don't have anything else on. Just wanted to like do you guys a favor and not scare you with my bare skin um so these are the palettes close up in case you haven't already seen them and i've been seeing a lot of people say that their palettes did arrive broken and one of mine did too my black shade in this palette is completely gone uh, but we'll talk about that more in the review portion of this video, I am just going over to hang out with some girlfriends. I thought I could pull off this palette with this sweater, but I don't know. I'm going to try and use a mix of these. So let's start off with a shade just to put in like the brow area. I'm just going to use this flat shader brush and highlight my brow bone. Okay, next shade I want to use is going to be from the Warm palette. I'm going to use this kind of like in a crease just to kind of start me off. So I like these warm shades, so I'm going to go in with this color just to start off on the crease after applying that skin tone shade. And then I'm going to go in with this next shade in the crease as well, just to kind of build up some color. Okay, now we'll go in with this shade, which is like a red-orange. Focus that more into the crease. I wonder if I should just go with a matte look. What do you guys think? Just like leave it like this, because all I'm doing today is hanging out with friends. One of my friends is moving out of town. She's moving to like Texas or something. So I don't really need to be super done up. But I just wanted to be able to show you guys like what the shades look like and stuff. Let's go in with a darker shade on the outer corner. I'm gonna hop into the Smoky palette. I've actually worn all of these palettes now. So I feel like I have a good idea of my thoughts and feelings on these palettes. This one is so messy since I had that broken shadow and stuff. I'm just using a Morphe M443 brush. These brushes are kind of older in my collection and they're definitely losing their shape. Just don't know if I want to like replace them with Morphe brushes or if I want to try some other brands. Morphe's just so cheap, but I'm just like so over supporting them. I just feel like they have really bad like ethics. I'm kind of done with Morphe. I'm like ready to sell like all my Morphe palettes and just be done with the brand because I think they're shady AF. But I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna 
put some liner on and come back and tell you more about these palettes. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed that little demo. It wasn't anything fancy, but this is the complete look. I do like these palettes because I think they're so handy and they're so tiny and so compact. They're a great addition to my collection. The only problem I have with them is the price point. I was watching Tara Babies, I believe is her YouTube handle. I'll link her channel down below. She does the best haul videos, guys. Oh my gosh. Like her hauls, so fun for me. I get so much satisfaction in watching other people's haul videos because it's just so much fun. So yeah, I was watching her talk about this and she actually mentioned and pointed out that these palettes on Sephora.com each pan says it contains 0.05 ounces but actually on the sleeves that the palettes go in and the only thing that's printed on here it says net weight is 10 grams and then each pan contains 0.35 ounces. I think I might have to look on the box because they never put the pan sizes in here but what I remember people saying is the pan size is the same as these palettes and I don't think it is. I think the pan size is 0.05 in this palette and then it's a little bit less in the Huda Obsession palettes. So I feel like that's a little bit of false advertising on Sephora's part and I was really appreciative that Terra Babies pointed that out because I wouldn't have thought to like double check like who's gonna look down here like I was I was looking at the packaging I was like I can't find the weight and I was like is it on the sleeve like I just remember the sleeve being blank and then lo and behold it's like right here like very hard to spot so I thought that was a little bit strange like I'm not trying to throw a shade but it is nice when you know, bigger YouTubers kind of share information like that because I think people have the right to know what they're paying for, you know what I mean? So that was a little bit strange and she also mentioned that these palettes are made in China whereas the Desert Dusk palette is made in Italy and I think, I mean, I don't know much about makeup production but from what I've heard, Italy is one of the places where a lot of high-end brands make their makeup. So like the Pat McGrath Labs palettes are made in Italy, a lot of my high-end palettes are made in Italy whereas some of my more indie brands like the Ace Beauté palette is made in China, Morphe I believe is made in China, I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, my point is I can definitely see a difference in quality with these palettes. Like I said, they're not extremely hard to use, but I do struggle blending these shades sometimes. And it's not all the time. I don't think you're gonna like struggle massively, but I feel like $27, you could have done a little bit better. I don't have that problem with this palette. So I just thought that was really fucking sketchy. I really see a difference in the quality. And the other thing too is that that shadow breaking and then seeing like, many many reviews or haul videos where people are like yeah my palette came broken I just watched one girl where two of her three palettes had broken shadows in them and Sephora is replacing them and I of course like rebought this palette in the second round and I'm just gonna return this into a store but she said Sephora is gonna let her keep her broken shadow and then they're just gonna send her a new palette so very interesting I feel like they're like it's a known issue so I think that's really strange and something to keep in mind when you're purchasing these palettes. They aren't pressed very tightly like the shadows. Like once you start swirling a brush in them, you can definitely see like the powderiness and even with the metallics, like I mentioned on the silver shade, it was just so strange because I could see the shadow moving and I could basically like create a divot in this palette if I really tried. So I don't know how worth the price tag these are. Like I feel like maybe she did like all four for 50 that would make more sense like price point wise because I just don't think the quality is that great. So those are my personal thoughts. I did want to show you guys. So I do have the rose gold palette. This was a disaster for me. It literally like got me to not want anything Huda Beauty but she came back with Desert Dust and I do really like the Desert Dust palette so I've just been on a huge Huda kick really been enjoying her stuff. Okay so the next thing I wanted to do is just compare this with some of the smaller palettes I have. Now this is one of the newer palettes by Colourpop. This has 12 eyeshadows so I love these guys. Even this palette, which I was like, this is such a snooze fest. I'm actually really enjoying this palette in case anyone was wondering. Um, so this has 12 shades. So three more and this has the nine 
shadows and I don't know I just think like this is $18 and this is $27 so I feel like it's a toss-up like do you go for the Huda ones because they have so many cool colors or do you go for something like more budget friendly now something that is also in the mini category are these colored rain palettes and these contain full-size eyeshadows by colored rain so this palette is $36 I thought it was very expensive and my colored rain review just went up on Sunday so I'll link it up in the cards if you guys are interested in that but I was really mad because these palettes went on sale like Two, three weeks after I ended up receiving them, they went down to $27 right as the Huda palettes came out. So I think they thought that they were in competition with the Huda palettes. But these are full size, so there is quite a bit of difference. And this palette is cruelty free as well. So look at the sizes here. This now is 0 0.05 ounces of product, which is what Sephora says is in these palettes but it's not 0.35 so so little bit sketchy all these shadows all these companies are freaking sketching me out because i feel like i'm paying more than i need to for what i am buying anyway let's talk about shade selection now a lot of people have been gravitating towards all of the neutral palettes i honestly couldn't pick there's no way i wouldn't have bought this one i just thought it was so cool and if you want to see swatches i did swatch all of these palettes so i will link that swatch party up in the cards but this one i actually had so much fun a lot of people really enjoyed that look i created with this palette i mean i used all of these palettes obviously before reviewing them so this is the one that's called mauve and i honestly don't think this is a mauve palette at all it looks more burgundy -y, burgundy esque more wine colors i would say i think when i think of a mauve palette i think of some of the shades in her desert dusk palette so let me just whip that out here quick i mean wouldn't you think like these shades would be a mauve palette not so much like these like i feel like ooh, crap i just stabbed turkish delight i just feel like that would be a mob palette not this anyway personal opinion let me know if you guys agree with anything i'm saying or disagree totally fine with that but this one I feel like is a strange name to call that one the mauve obsessions this is the one I like the least because these colors are just not me I should honestly probably return this but I love the metallics in this one like this these three are super metallic so really really fun to work with but I don't like this side and the dark the black was very black the little bit I had of it like it keeps getting everywhere but it was very pigmented and then the warm one is probably my favorite one uh, because it's all mattes except that gold shade in the middle so I, I feel like if we're gonna get one definitely the warm one just because you can do a variety of different looks like this is majority of what I'm wearing on my eyeballs I think I actually tried to use the other palettes but I ended up just using three shades from this palette on my eyeballs to create the look I'm wearing today but yeah I don't know I mean it's nice too because they do come with a mirror so these are like the perfect travel palette if you ask me I do feel like you know these are very suitable for all types of skin tones I think they will work for many people and I like that she gave us variety because you can just kind of buy what your favorite is whereas sometimes people get so overwhelmed when you get these giant palettes like for example the new Morphe holiday palette it's got a row of transition shades and like quadrants but I've seen a lot of people say like why didn't they just make them smaller so you could just buy like if you like the greens you could get the green shades if you like the blues you could get the blue shades and then throw in a few transition colors so I think people are really kind of gravitating towards mini size palettes because some of these palettes are getting so outrageously big it's it's ridiculous I don't have a problem with the wear time of these shadows I've definitely worn them through a whole work day and they've lasted just fine the only issues I've been having like I said are the blending issues and I do feel like they're not pressed in well which is why a lot of them are coming broken and I don't think there's a lot of product in there like people think there is which is definitely sketchy if you want to see swatches, like I mentioned, I already have a swatch video. I will link it in the cards for you guys. And of course, the million dollar question, would I recommend these palettes to you now? This is a tough one for me because like I said, I've really been loving Huda, but yes, the palettes are $27 a piece, but 27 times four. So if you buy all four palettes, that's how much you're paying for them, $108. 
that's where I think she gets everyone because if you buy two, you're still paying 50 bucks. You know what I mean? So that's what you have to keep in mind. Yes, you're saving money if you buy one, but most people are going to buy more than one and most people are going to end up paying 50 plus dollars. So I think that's where she gets you. I think that's what you need to keep in mind. You're better off picking up the Huda Desert Dust Palette, to be very honest, because a lot of people have said they really like this palette. And even though I like the idea of these palettes, I don't think she's giving us the same quality as she did in the Desert Dust Palette, which I think is really disappointing because I was really excited for these mini palettes. So in good conscience, I don't think I can say like, you need these. I love the idea. I think they're really cool. I think if you love makeup, it's gonna be really fun for you to have them. They're not the worst eyeshadow palettes in the world. I just feel like if you are buying one or two or three or four and paying a hundred and eight dollars then you're screwing yourself because you can buy a ColourPop palette that is amazing for 18 bucks and the ones without the mirrors are sixty dollars and those palettes are really really good and you can get them on sale because ColourPop was doing like a 20 percent off sale so it's a tough call. I just feel like these ones aren't the best quality, so I just can't recommend you guys spending $27 on them. So that is my conclusion. I think I'm going to keep them because I can make them work. They're not the worst, but I just, I just can't believe they're $27 for the quality. So I'm going to stop yammering. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are. I'm sure you guys have probably picked up these palettes as well. Especially because, honestly, like, I feel like during the VIP sale, nothing new really came out that I was really, really excited about. I keep eyeing the Becca Apreski palette, but I don't need it. I can't even get through my Jaclyn Hill palette. So I'm like, Karen, why do you want to buy another Becca palette? Like, why do I need more highlighters? Trying to stay away from that palette, I did cave and get the Tarte Toasted palette because Megan from Sephora in JCPenney here in Fargo, she like swatched one of the shades for me. She's like, I love this palette, look at this. And I was like, mm. Cause I was like, I don't need another warm eyeshadow palette, but I have the Tarte in Bloom palette. And I was like, let me compare the two because if you guys have been with me for a while, you know I really don't like the Tarte Linen Bloom palette. I just don't think it's the best for my skin tone. So I'm really excited to have the toasted palette so we can just do like a little battle of the palettes and see which one is best for us tan girls. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, leave me comments down below. I want to know what you guys' thoughts are. Do you think I'm absolutely crazy for being so torn? I just think these palettes are not worth the $27. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye guys.